your act, dear. I'll spoil something of yours someday, and I won't be your act. <clears throat> Do you suppose Miss Irene would like sandwiches served in here, or shall I create a sort of buffet? Where do you want the sandwiches served, Irene? What is food? Something you eat, silly. You want the sandwiches served in here, or don't you? What difference does it make? Some people do just as they like with other people's lives, and it doesn't seem to make any difference. Listen, Van Rumpel, just because some people have a million dollars doesn't mean they can put their arms around other people. Brr, where's the bar? Don't take her seriously, Charlie. The servant's problem has been bothering her lately. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. No, thank you. Four class. Oh, just a minute, Godfrey. Uh, bye. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tommy. Oh, Tommy Gray. Hello there. Oh, yeah. Hello. What's Hello. the matter with you, Godfrey? Are you ill? Come oh, really. along, Tommy, and give Angelica a hug. How's everything in Boston? All the beans and things. Oh. We're rounding him up and putting him in cans as rapidly as possible. Hello, Clutch. How are you, darling? What does it matter how I am? The whole thing is only a delusion. What thing? You wouldn't understand. Well, I don't so far. I'm famished. How about something to eat? Oh, Godfrey, Godfrey, bring Mr. Gray a sandwich. Well, oh, come around here, Mr. Gray's not an acrobat. Let us come over you. You're beginning to act like the rest of the family. Hey, wait a minute. What's the trouble? Godfrey Park, you old mug. Oh, do you know Godfrey? Know him? We went to Harvard together. I'm afraid you've confused me with someone else, sir. I'm Smith. Remember? <laughs> sure you're Smith. But we did go to college together. Or did we? Imagine a butler with a college education. He's not really the butler. And a very good one. You mean this is not a gag just for my benefit? Uh, Mr. Gray neglected to tell you that when we were in Harvard together, I was his valet. Was he a good servant, Tommy? Excellent. What's the idea? I'll tell you later. Uh, Mr. Gray never complained. When? No, I have very few complaints about Godfrey's work. I'll tell you tomorrow. It's my day off. Strange you never gave Mr. Gray as a reference. You see, I left Mr. Gray under very unusual circumstances. What circumstances? I'd rather Mr. Gray told you about that. Well, don't go away. Come here, come here and tell us all about it. You know, Tommy, Godfrey's a very mysterious person. Nobody seems to know anything about him. Don't go away, Godfrey. No, no, don't go away, Godfrey. Uh, you see, I, I didn't want to say anything about this. Uh, but you see, Godfrey had been working for us as a butler and, and, and whatnot, and, and things have been going along very well when, when all of a sudden it happened. <laughs> Just like that. You're sure you want me to tell all this, Godfrey? Well, you see, uh, as I said, he'd been working for us for some time when one day he came to me and said, Mr. Gray, he said, I trust my work has always been satisfactory, he said. And I said, why, of course. I, I said, I, I've never had more satisfactory work in, in all my life. And he said, thank you, Mr. Gray. He was always a very courteous man, Godfrey. Godfrey is still extremely courteous, especially in the morning. Well, it's not much of a story, really. Maybe we'd better skip it. Oh, come on, Tommy, and finish it. You can't stop in the middle. Well, let me see. Where was I? Oh, you were telling us how very polite Godfrey was. Yes, and that's where I said that Godfrey was still very polite. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bullock. It's a pleasure to have you say so publicly. That's my nature, Godfrey. I never say anything behind your back that I won't say in public. And that's what I admire about you, Angelica. Well, that's nice of you, Tommy. What about the story? Well, anyhow, Godfrey came to me and said, I trust my work has been satisfactory, sir. That was about the gist of it, wasn't it, Godfrey? And those may not have been my exact words, sir, but that was about the gist of it. All right, we'll settle for that. You said he was very satisfactory, and then he said thank you, and then what? Naturally, I had to take an attitude. You don't make sense. What kind of an attitude? Well, the only kind I could take toward a faithful servant. But Godfrey decided in favor of his wife and five children. Five children? Five. My, my. Was his wife an Indian woman? I believe she was rather dark. We used to take her on hunting trips to talk the game. 
Godfrey, why didn't you tell me you had five children? Well, why shouldn't Godfrey have five children? If a woman in Canada can have five children, why can't Godfrey? Oh, <laughs> you see? <laughs> I owe the creation of my family to Mr. Gray's generosity. Well, if other people can have five children, so can other people. Personally, I think two are plenty. And strange enough, Bullock agrees with me. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I want to make an announcement about something. Come here. Go ahead. Now, what are you going to announce? I want to announce my, my, my engagement. I'm going to be married. Well, You're going no, to be married? I'm ready. Yeah. Well, you'll find out soon enough. Not Charlie Van Ruffel. Yes, Charlie Van Ruffel. Where is he? Oh, he's at the bar. Well, well, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I've had my arm around her plenty of times before, but this is the first time I ever felt that chill except I'm a breeze. Congratulations, old boy. Congratulations about what? Your engagement, you slug. What engagement? Why, you're engaged to Irene, aren't you? Am I? Oh, come, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> You said it. When did it happen? Just now. <laughs> What's all the excitement? What did she say? I think Scotland got herself engaged or something. Oh, has she again? It must be that nice boy in the brown suit. Let's go and congratulate them. This is thrilling. You're a lucky boy. I know I am. I'm not Van Rumpel. Oh, you're not? Well, which one is he? There he is. Oh, you'll pardon me, I hope. Oh, no. You're Van Rumpel, aren't you? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, you'll take good care of her. I imagine so. My mind's a little cloudy. I don't even remember proposing. You're always proposing. <laughs> oh, which one did you take me up on? All of them. <laughs> How do you think Godfrey will feel about your engagement? What has Godfrey got to do with it? I wonder. Oh, you mind your own business. All right, Godfrey, let's have those. Come on, everybody. All Aren't you going board. to congratulate Irene Godfrey? She just got herself engaged. Well, I'd be very happy to. Godfrey, come congratulate Irene. May I congratulate you, Miss Irene? I wish you all the happiness in the world. Just leave her alone. She'll be all right in a minute. Is she mad at me? Of course not. She's not mad at anybody. Don't you know women always cry at their own engagements and other people's weddings? Why? I don't know why, but they just do. <laughs> Irene is so peculiar. She shouts when she wins and cries when she's happy. Oh, Alexander, you missed all the excitement. What's going on? Oh, let me see. I knew what it was I wanted to say, but somehow it slipped my mind. What's the matter with Irene? Oh, yes. I mean, he's got himself engaged. To whom? I don't know, Van something or other. I think he's that boy with his arm around that girl in pink. He's got lots of money. Well, he'll need it. Godfrey, let you and I have a good cry. How about lunch by hotel tomorrow? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you prefer soda or ginger ale? Uh, both. Twelve o'clock? Very good, sir. You make up your mind yet who she's going to marry. I'd like to meet the guy. I don't know, Alexander. Some of those boys in there. Come along now. You're not eating well this morning, sir. You notice everything. Business trouble, sir? What made you ask that? Uh, well, sir, uh, butlers can't help picking up scraps of news, shall we say? We shan't say anything about it. I thought I might be of some help, sir. I dabbled in the market at one time. Well, one dabbler in the family is quite enough. Very good, sir. Uh, eggs? No, thank you. Godfrey, you seem to be a pretty good sort. Have you noticed anything queer about me lately? Nothing particularly, sir. I sometimes wonder whether my whole family has gone mad or whether it's me. I know just how you feel, sir. I've felt that way many times since I've been here. Then why do you stay here? I have to. You don't. It's much more comfortable than living in a packing box on a city dump, sir. Besides, I'm rather proud of my job here. You're proud of being a butler? I'm proud of being a good butler, sir. And I may add, sir, a butler has to be good to hold his job here. Say, who are you? I'm just a nobody, sir. Uh, coffee? Godfrey, here I am. So you've turned up at last, eh? I began to think you'd fallen down the kitchen sink. Sorry I'm late, Tommy. It's hard to make beds when they're full of people. Waiter, you seem to do everything except put out the cat. I suppose I do that too, only we have no cat. <laughs> the same for me. What would you have, Jarvis, my man? Make it a rousing old lemonade. Lemonade, you sure you can handle it? Oh, yes, I'm the type who can take it or leave it alone. You see, uh, now that I'm a working man, I have to keep my wits about me. I'm beginning to wonder if you've got any left at all. But don't avoid the issue. I've been sitting here like a snoopy old maid with her ears flapping in the breeze, 
waiting to hear the dirt. What dirt would you like to hear? Well, when I wander into a Fifth Avenue asylum and see one of the park parks of Boston serving hors d'oeuvres, I think I'm entitled to a pardonable curiosity. Well, I tell you something that you won't understand. Tommy, you've fallen off so many polo ponies that your brains are scrambled. But I still want to know why you're battling when your family's telling everybody that you're in...